My mom is a narcissist and gaslighter who uses me as a husband figure instead of finding one. I'm confronting her today. Let's talk about it. Boom, Hey, how you doing? I'm here with my mom. And we're gonna get to some things. So before we got on camera, my mom was talking about her 60th birthday because she's turning 60 this year. And my mom has the belief that I'm supposed to do so many things for her birthday. I'm 30 years old, 29, I'm turning 30. And let me give you some context. So I told my mom this year she can get either a really large gift, a really large party, or a really large trip. She wants all three. I and do. she doesn't just want all three, she feels like she's entitled to them. And I that's do. the core of our constant problem. I'm not saying I'm entitled, but I'm saying that he should be gracious enough to want to believe. I am, I am trying to save for a marriage for kids. My kids won't get financial aid like I got at college, okay? I'm trying to make sure that I have myself and my life set up to make sure that it's successful. And if I'm saying this year I want to find love and I want to do all these things and I want to be married to and I want to have kids and all these things, I can't... He can still say, all he has to do is get married and wait five but I think, years. I think that... Why Great. should that be my option? Five. Great. Why should that be my option? It should not be my option. Because who, who, who's going to take care of the baby when you are working? Mom. Absolutely. I think that your problem is that you should have found a husband. Faster. I didn't want a husband. An alpha female. Are you trying to get me to fill in the gap of being your husband? I'm not trying to. You are. I'm, you I'm, need I'm, to find a man to buy. You need to find I'm, a man I'm, to buy. Let me tell you this here. I'm going to get a friend. But I'm not looking for no husband. She belongs to the streets. <laughs> but who's going to do all these things for you that you're talking about? I'll do a lot of them. I take on a lot of those things. For people who don't know, I got my own house, car. I pay for a lot of our life. But nevertheless, I do those things willingly. I love my I mom. I did them too. I did I, them. But my mom thinks because she did that. I did them too. My mom thinks because. I did them too. You were supposed to. Who said? You I, are the mom. I know, I know a lot of parents who don't do what I damn did. So you think you get a him. you think you get a pat on the back because of the fact that no, you gave I'm me a asking, regular childhood? I'm, I'm not Come on. Let me tell you something. You all tell me. How many of you all had a car at 16? Wow. No, 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 no. Uh -uh, we got uh -uh. that. And Stop. this was no, I had to get a car. Was, I went to a car. magnet school that didn't have a bus system. I had to get a car. I got into this magnet school, the best school in Georgia. I had to get the, I had to get to school. Ask them how I got in there. Because I tested in there. No, we had to interview to go in there. Yeah, we, me. No, it wasn't just you. I, I did too. <sighs> I anyway, leave my job and come and interview. Mom, so, I have to no. perform constantly. I was the one who had to get into Harvard. I'm the one who has to get into Brown. I'm the one who had to get into Goldman. I'm the one who had to become the hedge fund analyst. I'm the one who had to start the company. I'm the one who had to do the pitch decks. It's me. I have to do all the things. And you can't handle the truth. That's what he's trying to say. It's, it's, and all just, you do no. is reap the benefits of all the seeds and, I've and, sown. And, 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 and I'm what, only 30 and I deserve to have a life. No, and you reap the benefits of what I sowed as well. I deserve to have a life and, and I deserve to have a family and, and I deserve to have a marriage and I deserve to do and all those you things. Should. And you should. I chose the road less traveled because let me tell you something. He was already missing a daddy. Had I married and a man did him. My dad died when I was three. Had I married and a man mistreated him, and he already understood at the age of three the unconditional love You're of a You're just father. a gaslighter, and so I'm just going to end this here. I'm just going to say this. Whatever. No, he's the gaslighter. Gaslighter, bro. Really? Boom, my God. Jesus. Always gaslighting no, me. No, I'm not. So let's, no, let's, not, let the no, people, not. let's let the people, let's let people decide. No, no, no I'm not. I no, think I'm you're not. a narcissist. No, I'm not. I'm not narcissistic and stop saying it. I about think you're me. a narcissistic gaslighter and that's what I think. And we'll see what other people think. Whatever. Let's get into some things. Bro, the LGBTQ propaganda in this young man. What? This 30 year old man. He's not even a young man. He's a grown ass man. Here is my thoughts on the situation, all right? So this is a scenario that most men are going to find themselves in today with the divorce rate being 70%. Single mothers essentially now taking over the household and having to raise these young men. You can see a lot of the uh, linguistics he's having, the terms he's using. Narcissistic, gaslighter. You can't just call her out for what she is. So you're using TikTok terminology. The reality is you're 30 years old. It's good that you're planning for a marriage. It's good that you're planning to have a family. 
Your mother's 60 years old and she wants this vacation. She wants to be taken out. It's another round number year. She wants you as her son to fulfill that and provide that because she wasn't able to unfortunately find another husband. And mostly because, let's be honest, I mean, the father passed away. She didn't just leave him and divorce him like most women are doing today. But nevertheless, circumstances happen, exceptional circumstances, unfortunate circumstances happened to this young, to this family. And now the mother had to take over. And when the man is very, very attached to just the mother and he only has the mother to lead him, he has these feminine characteristics. However, he's still a man. He's still treated like a man in society. He still had to go to Harvard. He still had to put into work as a man. He still had to work from the bottom all the way up. And the mom is having trouble un- empathizing, genuinely, genuinely empathizing for her son. She still believes I should be treated like a queen from my son. That's the problem that women are having, that mothers are, are, single mothers are having, is if I can't find a man, I am going to put all the financial burden, all my necessities, all my feelings onto my son. And I can understand that. I can empathize why a woman would want that, right? But look at this guy. Unfortunately, this guy doesn't know or doesn't understand that his mom just changes the conversation from i need to i need to sit here and prov- and start to save up money for a family and a marriage these priorities come first before your little vacation because you're turning 60 years old what's a greater present a vacation where your son loses money essentially essentially loses money for you to experience something or for him to prepare himself to have a child into the world and give you a grandkid. Because ultimately you lose more time spending with your grandkid if he prioritizes this vacation. And what does she do to shift the conversation? She uses guilt. Oh, but I did this for you when you were younger. But I did this for you. That was your duty as a mother. Why are you throwing that onto your son as if he owes you something? He doesn't owe you anything. You brought him into this world. You had a duty to unfortunately not just nurture him, but to provide and protect him. And she wasn't out in the streets, but now she's like, I'm going to be out in the streets. I don't need no man's kind of mentality. I don't need no man to take care of me. I did it all by myself. You have that little alpha. An alpha female. The alpha female energy. And what does it do? It just, her energy, try, try, she tries to shame, guilt, her man, her, sorry, her, not just her man, <laughs> if she had one, but her son. She can't do it to the man that she's been dating because the men don't stick around for that. They just leave. So she just passes all that stress, all that hard work, all that emotional damage onto her son. And unfor- you know, this guy is trying to do, he's trying to do the right thing. I think his head is in the right place. He has a decent relationship with his mother. I wish he took care of himself better as a man. I wish he stopped adopting all these TikTok terminologies because that ultimately will lead to towards your detriment in becoming the man, the man or the father figure of the household. He has a great work ethic. He's put himself through school knowing where he wants to get to. He didn't just blindly go to school. So I can respect this. And unfortunately, this is going to be the the reality for a lot of young men today. Right? Again, the men that grow up with single mothers. They're going to be shamed. They're going to be guilted. Especially even if you have a weak father in the household. And you're just a lot closer to your mother. Or even if your father is around. And the mother just decides, you know what? Your father's a trash. She ultimately starts to do what? turn her kids away from the father figure away from the husband even if he wants to stick around she makes it hard for him to see them and what does the boy do the boy just 
adopts the mother's characteristics, not a man's characteristics. It makes it harder for him to climb up into the world because he's so empathetic, sympathetic. Empathy. She's a narcissist. She's abusing me. I'm a victim. You're, you're, you're essentially preparing your young boy to have this victimized mentality. And the truth is that a lot of grown men, a lot of men are going through this today. So how do you beat this? How do you combat this relationship? Well, first you have to acknowledge these are the tactics my mother are using. And at first you're going to get very angry. You're going to get on that defensive mode of, damn, my mother just an evil woman. Da -da 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 -da. Feminist corrupted her brain. She doesn't realize it. She doesn't know it because she hasn't logically thought it through. You understand it because you've experienced how she's treated you through her own behaviors. And then if you start to psychoanalyze yourself, you start to realize, oh, damn, I do have a lot more feminine characteristics than I do masculine characteristics. And that comes from you being overly attached to your mother. You have to, the mothers have to learn to cut off the umbilical cord and the son has to learn to acknowledge you know what? My mom should be dating. I'm out of the house. I shouldn't have to take care of every... I shouldn't be guilted into taking care of all the little experiences that she wants. You're, she, this guy's right. I'm not your husband. I'm your son. That doesn't mean don't, take, don't listen to your mother. That doesn't mean don't have a good, good conversation with your mother. That doesn't mean don't take care of her when she is going through shit for real, like if she's going to get kicked out of the house or something, if she doesn't know how to manage her finances, you should teach her how to manage her finances. You should put yourself in a position where you can help her get out of a crappy situation. But you shouldn't be guilted into doing so. That's what men do. We protect the women in our lives, but not out of sheer guilt, not out of, oh, we owe them. We do it because we love them. We love the women we have for our lives. And ultimately, it takes a higher level of putting a little bit of your pride aside, having a little bit of empathy, empathy. for your mother and understanding, hey, yeah, she's treated me this way, but I'm a grown ass man. I know how to communicate. I know how to listen. And I understand the reality of the situation. I'm putting myself, I'm standing taller because I am actually going to understand and I'm going to communicate how we, how, the boundaries that we should have between mother and son because I love you and I want to have this relationship. I don't want to resent you as a child. I don't want to be a victim. I don't want to create you as an enemy in my head. I understand that the enemy is the ideology. It's the behaviors. And these things can be changed. These things can be changed by communicating. Because when you communicate from a position of love instead of a position of hate, somebody is more susceptible to listen, especially your parents. All right, let's go through some of the comments real quick. All right. Time to move out. Well, that's true. That's absolutely true, right? The first thing you should do is move out of your mother's home. You have no idea. You cannot become your own man living in your mother's home. It's nearly impossible. You can't set the rules. You can't set the standards for how this relationship is going to go. If you are not paying all the bills, not a majority of the bills, all the bills, you need to have your own place. You need to build your own home. And you start and you start that journey by moving out your mother's home. Now, you can do it impulsively. If you're young, you can do it impulsively. If you're, if you're level-headed, this is not going to work for most people. You need to have, find a good job. You need to save. You need to look for areas. You need to possibly find a roommate so you cut down your living expenses. And you need to create and you need to build your own home. Trying to do it by yourself is more often than not nearly impossible in today's economy and it's really not worth it you want to you want to find someone you consider a brother if you do not already have a brother 
You want to build good characteristics and good traits within yourself so that you're able to do what? Lead by example with the person you're living. You learn how to establish a good relationship between man to man. And more importantly, you learn to build each other up. Not argue like in your mother's house. Not resent each other. Not victimize each other. But learn to work together. It's always what's best for us. Not what's best for you. And not just what's best for me, but what's best for us. When you can build that relationship with a man, guess what? You take that same dynamic and you apply it to a woman. And you understand, hey, what separates me from my brothers is, oh, this is a, there's gender, we are, we have different genders. There are different roles in our relationship. These are the standards. These are the boundaries that we're going to have. Let's abide by them so that we can work in unity together, man to woman, create a family. There you go. Well, that's a, that's a, B, C, D. Wow. All right. She is your PFP. The second you said marriage and kids, her face, red flag, red flag, red flag. She doesn't want her little boy to grow up. She won't cut the umbilical cord. You ate this up. You are 100 correct. Uh, she will make your future partner's life a living hell. Please consider taking a break from her, right? See, this, this woman knows. This woman's dealt with it, right? This woman's dealt with it. Emotional damage. That comment was made from experience. 36,300 likes from Michaela. Why? It's not take a break from her. It's move the fuck out, bro. Become a man. No woman is going to respect you for a long time if you live with your mother. Now, if you have a home and you live in two separate floors where you don't have to interact with each other, then that's, that's probably a better living situation. Why is she rolling her eyes at you when you talk about finding love and building a family? Maybe there's no good options. She doesn't like the women that he chooses. Your mother, this is the truth. Your mother is going, to, is going to be able to see the woman you're with for who she really is. And you shouldn't make a decision off that, off, off that. You should understand that one, your mother and your future wife have to get along, whether they like each other or not. And you have to take your mother's opinion on your girl into consideration as towards what are you? What are the risk factors you're getting with, into this girl with? And what are you going to have to tolerate in the future? Ultimately, that's your decision. Because your mother is going to see these things. Your mother's going to see these things a mile ahead. Why? Because she's been through it already. She's, she has that level of wisdom. Your mother has a level of wisdom of understanding what a woman goes through because she's gone through it and her friends have gone through it. So she knows when she sees, oh, I remember Becky acting just like that when she was 23. And look at where her life is now. She makes that assumption based on the behavioral traits that your girl has. Use those as learning lessons towards what you're going to have to tolerate with in the future. That's all. All right. But don't take dating advice from your mother. It's <laughs> she wants what's best for you, but she doesn't know what it's like to date a woman. That's the difference. Forget. Don't forget, guys. If I've provided you with any sort of value, entertainment, right, or something that you could actually apply to your life, drop a like on the video, all right, or subscribe. Jesus.